So for forecasting, we're going to look at time series analysis. For time series analysis, what we will have is a time period index where we are collecting data at each time interval. Generally, these are equal distant apart. So this could be at noon each day, as an example. Uh, or it could be each quarter. So at the end of the quarter, how many sales did we have? We sold 264 TV sets. At the end of the second quarter, we sold 209, third, 292, etc. So the first thing we're going to look at are stationary models. Um, really, before we even get into that, we should look at one thing. When we have a set of data, and we want to s and we want to try to figure out what kind of model to go with. The first thing we should really do is do a scatter plot where our x variable is going to be the time period index, so along the horizontal, and our y variable is going to be whatever it is we're trying to predict or forecast. In this case, I've generically labeled it sales. So to do a scatter plot, we go up to insert and then over here we have scatter. I like to go ahead and add lines to it. Uh, so we're going to do that, but before I do that I'm going to be smart and select the data. And then Excel is smart enough to know that I want X this way and sales this way. And so we get our nice sales plot right there. And we can make it pretty by changing the the axis, stuff like that. So the real object here is to determine whether or not we see any patterns in the data. Sometimes this is easy, sometimes it's not. Uh, in order to use a stationary model, we're hoping to see a horizontal pattern. So something that, that is close to some middle value, some mean, and we expect some random fluctuation around it, some error term that is uh, outside our control. So here it, it looks like it's relatively flat, but in order to verify that it is, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a simple linear regression with the time period as my x, the sales as my y, and if time period comes back insignificant, a high p-value, then I can say that it's, there's no trend, no linear trend to it. So then I can assume that there is a flat middle ground here. So let's do that. So we need to do a regression. I'm using Excel 2010 on Microsoft Windows machine. Uh, this will be slightly different if you're using a Mac. But for us, uh, we go to data, data analysis. Now, if you don't have that highlighted, then you need to go into the manage add-ins and make sure you have data analysis tool pack checked off. Uh, and when the dialog box pops up, I'm going to go down to regression, click OK. My Y range, that is what I'm trying to predict. I'm trying to predict sales. So I'm going to select all of those guys. My X range is my independent variable. So I'm going to pick column A, time period. I did pick the first row, which has labels. Uh, and my output range, uh, let me go ahead and just put it down here in A24. And the other stuff I don't care about, because all I'm doing is checking to see whether or not I can assume that it's a stationary or horizontal pattern to the data. I click OK. I get the sample output. Notice our R-squared is very, very low. Just R-squared is a negative number. And then the thing we're looking at is this p-value right here. All right. That p-value is large, meaning, meaning that we can um, assume that the null hypothesis is true. The null hypothesis is that the beta 1 is equal to 0 meaning that there is no linear trend. So because there is no linear trend, we can assume that there, that our initial gut feeling of looking at the photo up here, that there is just a straight line, horizontal line here, close to it. That's good. That means we can use stationary 
models to do our forecasting. So let's get into the different types of models. I'll move this down so I can start to actually get the models in. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is the naive forecast. The naive is sounds just like its name. It's very, very naive. All we're going to do is for the second time period, the second quarter, my forecast is going to be what happened during the first quarter. So we take a snapshot. What what did we sell at the in the first quarter? I know that because I have a computer rice system. It tells me I sold 264. So I'm going to predict that I'm going to sell 264 in February. Ye or sorry, the second quarter. So it is very very naive. It's very very simple because all I need is one historical data point to, to get the forecast. So once I do that, I can highlight all the way or move it all the way down and then I could get the forecast for the upcoming future period period 21 right which is 261 so that's the naive forecast one of the stationary models the other one that we're gonna look at is moving average now this is a sliding window is the way I like to think of it. That's the moving part. And then we take the average. So here we get to pick. Uh, there is some art to deciding how many periods to put into the moving average. Let's do three periods, three quarters. So that means we need the last three quarters in order to make the forecast for the fourth period. So that means the first three I can't do anything with, right? so I can't do anything with these. I'll put X's in those. Here then, notice I'm just using embedded formulas that are, are found in Excel. Equals average, and I want these three, 264, 209, 292, and we come up with 255. And again, I can drag that all the way down to get a forecast for all of those guys. And we see that Naive forecast predicts 261. The moving three quarter moving average predicts 258 and a third. Now, which one of those is better? We'll have to talk about that a little bit later. So that's the moving average. Another stationary model that we're going to look at is called the weighted moving average. For this, let's take a three-quarter weighted moving average in order to do that I need some weights uh, so let's put the weights right here let's say 0 0.1 I like my weights to add up to 1 it makes my life easy 0 0.3 and 0 0.6 and what I'm saying is the most recent month I want to have weighted 0.6 so basically it's twice as much as this two two quarters ago and two quarters ago is three times as much as the third quarter past so I think stuff and stuff most recent is more important than stuff as it gets older so in order to do this I'm gonna use the function sum product I'm gonna take the weights I'm gonna anchor it by hitting F4 making absolute reference and it takes in the array over here and for that fourth quarter I get 264.3 I can drag this guy all the way down and get weighted moving averages for the whole time right. so you could verify that it's doing this right it's taking 264 and multiplying by 0 0.1 so we get 26.4 0.3 times 20.9 plus 0.6 times 292 that's what the sum product is doing for us and make sure it's doing the same thing right I'm moving that window down but I'm keeping the weights where they were because I anchored it then a special form of the weighted moving average is exponential smoothing Here we need an alpha. 
a smoothing constant. The smoothing constant ranges between 0 and 1 inclusively and in class we'll talk about which ones uh, what it means when it's closer to 0 versus closer to 1. Uh, so let's just pick uh, 0 0.5. Right? There is an art to it like I said but we will get to that later. So the second period forecast is simply what we saw the first time. All right. And then if we look at the formula on page 208 of your textbook, formula 6.8, it's saying the forecast is equal to the smoothing constant times the actual value from time period t, the one before, plus 1 minus the smoothing constant, that quantity times the forecast from the time before. So I need to implement that formula. So I have alpha, which I'm going to anchor, multiplied times the actual that happened the time before, which would be 209, plus the quantity 1 minus alpha, I'm going to anchor that again, times what I had forecasted for that. And then I can ought to be able to drag this guy all the way down as well. And we see we get a forecast of 259.97, so basically 260. So those are the four models that we're going to look at for stationary. Uh, if we change alpha here, right, it changes things. Right? Changes what the forecasts look like. We'll talk about how to find the optimal alpha as well when we look at that as well. Um, so those are the four models we're going to look at for stationary models. Again, we first verified that it, we could use stationary models, and then we came up with these four. Now we still have to figure out whether or not the which which one of these four models is better than the other one. Right, so, because they all come up with different forecasts, we got 261, 258, 264, and 260. Right, for forecasts, we got four different forecast numbers. Are they close enough? They don't matter, perhaps, but we would like to know which one to to go with. So that talks about stationary models. Next up, after this, we will talk about trend and seasonality.